You guys won't believe this. I played a little bit of sap on my phone yesterday. I'm telling you, it was 10, 10, 7, 10, 10. Car, camera, person, man, woman. They said they'd never seen anything like it before. Chibli, <laughs> Olivia Munn said, what are you talking about? Scores for Barbie be like, so true. Me, when um, I see the news that a Lena Dunham Polly Pocket movie starring Lily Collins got greenlit thanks to the box office success of Barbie. There's no other way. We have to fix the top. Me going back to unbuy the 100 tickets I bought to the opening night premiere of Barbie. There's no other way. We have to fix the timeline. You think Justin Verlander gets traded today? Um, all right, taking next caller. Listen, I don't want to break any news. I don't want to get the, any heat on my back here from the, the Major League Baseball commissioner or anything like that. But my sources are telling me it's already a done deal in principle. They're just working out the particulars. You heard it here first. Justin Verlander will be a Baltimore Oriole before the end of the day. The Orioles, previously they'd been making a push for um, Shohei Otani. It looks like that is going to fall through. And they will be pivoting to go for Justin Verlander instead. I, I don't know anything about baseball, obviously. I know that Shohei Otani is incredible. And he's leading or like tied for the league lead in home runs. Um, does he have a shot at winning the Cy Young? No. He will not... He, he does not have a legitimate path to the Cy Young. Okay. Well, he's not that good then. Sounds like he should work on his pitching a little bit. Did you guys know that Quinn Hughes has the most points per game of any uh, NHL player from the 2018 draft class? Yeah, even more than Rasmus Dahlin. Yeah, more than Brady Kachuk. Did you know this? Did you hear about this one, Kevin? How many playoff wins does he have? I don't know, like three... Seven, I guess he has 10 playoff wins that all came in one season. Baby's doing okay. We had a little bit of a slow start this morning because at, at 5.15 a.m. I woke up to water, water. So I woke up and was like, <gasps> and then ran downstairs to get a little baby sippy cup of water, ran back upstairs and brought the sippy cup to her. And then I, when she got the water, Holy cow, she was like <laughs> And then she just fell back asleep. She drank like the entire I mean it's just a little cup, but she drank the entire cup of water and then was like, Good night. You don't keep water in your room? Um No, honestly, I don't know how uh I think that uh, listen, I stay hydrated, don't get me wrong, but at the same time I would say since I reached double digits in age, like since 10 years old, I do not um, keep like a glass of water on my nightstand. I've just never really, I mean, I, I guess I understand the point. I have just not seen the need for myself since approximately the year 1998. It's so nice if you wake up at night. This is my counterpoint. Uh, well, the first thing I was, listen, you, we, we can both live on earth together, okay? Like, it's not like one of us needs to change. If it's working for you, that's great. But like, I guess I just stay hydrated well enough throughout the day that I can go eight hours without water, without feeling completely desiccated. The world was wide enough. So true. Aaron Burr did not need to shoot Alexander Hamilton just because Alexander Hamilton did not put a cup of water on his nightstand before bed. Also, I don't want to wake up at like 2 a.m., drink water, and then wake up earlier than I otherwise would wake up because now I have to go to the bathroom faster. Tiny bladder, old ass bladder. I mean, it's just you drink more liquid, you piss more. It's, not, it's got nothing to do with the size of your bladder. It's got, I, I, I think that I have a perfectly average bladder, honestly. I routinely go a full stream without, without peeing despite drinking a couple of sparkling waters. I'm just saying, like, you don't have to try to not have a glass of water. I'm just saying there's like a few things that you see other people do all the time that I do not do. And it has not affected my life in a negative way as far as I can tell. <clears throat> For example, no cup of water on the nightstand. Once a month, I will um, 
have trouble falling asleep, I'll go down and chug a glass of water from the fridge. The second thing that I don't do is I don't have like a rinse cup when I brush my teeth. I don't keep like a, a grody plastic cup in my bathroom and then like after I spit my toothpaste out, I fill it with water and then like rinse my mouth with this dirty ass water that hasn't been washed for like, I mean the cup hasn't been washed for like two months. I'll be on, maybe this, I don't know if there's a dentist here. I don't even rinse after I brush. I feel like the, the brush is like self rinsing or something. Why not? I've never noticed a, never noticed a problem. You don't have to, you're a psycho. You're not supposed to, hang on. Should you rinse your mouth after brushing? How to te keep your teeth clean from the National Health Society. Don't rinse your mouth immediately after brushing as it'll wash away the concentrated fluoride in the remaining toothpaste. Okay, Kona, be like, that's the idea, brother. Rinsing it dilutes it and pre dilutes, it's, reduces its preventative effects. Holy cow, I'm accidentally, I can't read, but I'm accidentally a genius. This is crazy. I had no idea. I've been brushing my teeth wrong my whole life. Well, it's, I don't even blame you because it's just one of those things where like, you know, your mom and dad probably grew up with their parents using a rinse cup. So they raised you to use a rinse cup and you're like, you never assumed it's so benign that you'd be like, oh, I, I'm not going to ask my doctor if like a rinse cup is a good idea. Of course it's a good idea. It's like asking if I should wipe my ass after I shit. You don't want caked on feces, uh, you know, around your hole. I drink it from the tap. Did you even listen to what we said? Literally, the National Health Society, I didn't know this in advance. The National Health Society says don't rinse it. They don't say don't use a cup. They're saying don't rinse, man. They're wrong. No, Colonel Sanders, you're wrong. British or Canadian National Health Service? I don't want to answer that. The answer is self-evident because Canada doesn't have a nationalhealthservice.uk URL. But I feel like if I say British, you're going to say, oh, you, and you trust them? But it can't be Canadian because they, well, I don't know. I was going to say it can't be Canadian because they had time to update their webpage. But then I remember that my doctor, whenever I want an appointment, uh, it's like, you know, we're booking for 14 months out from now. But then once a week, I get an email in my inbox that's like, here's my summer health tips. And it's like 5,000 words long. That's like apply sunscreen and drink water. Hey, we hope everybody's having a fun time at the national parks and the beaches this summer. But remember, with the warm weather comes a variety of different risks that we should take advantage of. And I'm like, how'd you have time to write this? Meanwhile, I come to see you in your office and it's like, hey, uh, we heard you're not feeling well. What are your symptoms? Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, like you're doing right now? I will say, though, I'm, I'm just being real with you. Because I have never used a rinse cup, I do think that I, or never rinsed my mouth after brushing my teeth in general, I do feel like I oftentimes, compared to the average person, have accidentally left some toothpaste on the corners of my mouth when I leave to go outside. So I will say, this is in the interest of intellectual honesty. Most other streamers would say something like, I am so smart, I didn't use a rinse cup because you gotta let the fluoride sink longer. I'm willing to say that it's possible that it's worse to go outside with toothpaste dried around the edge of your mouth than it is to prematurely rinse some fluoride out of your mouth. Like you, you might pay a small dental cost, but you have avoided a small social embarrassment, which could... You, you might choose, you know, your battle on that one. You don't look at your face. I know what I look like. I don't need to, I don't need to look in the mirror like every 15 seconds. Yeah, it's not like I have a bad hair day. What is this? Did you ever get the white people pasta stains on the corners of your mouth when you were a kid? What do you mean white people pasta stains? <laughs> is that not cross-cultural? Doesn't everybody get a little tomato sauce in the corners of their mouth when they eat pasta? I didn't know that it was because I'm Caucasian. You know exactly what I mean. <laughs> I just don't get it. I mean, I think I get it. I just didn't know that it was like a... I didn't know that it was tied to my, my genes. I mean, I don't pay close attention to decorum when I'm eating. I'm not like, you know, Thor... 
but I'm, I'm not, you know, like a, a southern gentleman either. Now you got me messed up thinking that I got some toothpaste on the corners of my lips. Slash marker the dolls. Can you guys be honest with me? Do I have toothpaste on the corner of my lips? I know you can't see me just yet, but I... Here. I'm so paranoid. Do I? OMG, you do? Hang on. Because in order to see myself, I need to look to the right. But that means I have to turn my head, which means I can't see my lips. <laughs> Thumbnail face? Thumb okay, thumbnail face. How's that? that? That's pretty much all I got. That's like all of them. OMG, you look just like him. It's me! That's because it's me! The f if I'm uh, doing something devilish in Super Auto Pets, it's always like this. If I'm surprised my strategy is working, it's like. And then if I'm like, oh, no matter what I try, it's futile. Something like that. I recognize you from YouTube. If I'm, if I'm flabbergasted. Soy face. Me when I level up on turn seven and get a Triceratops and a leech. Anyway, the dolls. <laughs> oh man. Tomo, you gotta just stop whipping your tail into the court. You could go anywhere else in the room, but just not the, not the cords. That's it's the only thing. You just don't go into the cords, man. You got that. There's a hundred percent of the room available. It's like 0.1 percent of the room is cords. It's like the same amount that um, the Bahamas export paintings. Bahamas. It's the Bahamas. Okay. I thought you took care of the cords. Kate took care of the cords. The cord management is good, but when this dude's like spinning around at like. Like 600 RPMs whipping his tail into the USB like he's causing problems. Some decoy cords. I think the thing is, it's not the, it's not the cords, it's that I'm here. So he comes over to like my left leg and if I don't give him attention in five seconds, he's like, oh, I got to go to the right leg instead. People always say that. They're like, why don't you just put like a, a cat bed up? Why don't you put like a box or something? I know you've, maybe it worked for you. Maybe you just saw it on reddit.com slash r slash aww. But cats, they have their, each one has their own personality and they all have their own response to things as well. Like there's no one size fits all. You could buy them a cat bed. Maybe they'll sleep in the cat bed. Maybe they'll just be like, what is this piece of junk? And come over and start scratching you. Like we got, we got ample climbing and grazing opportunities here. Hi, buddy. Yeah, yeah, stick your neck right under the wheel of the Herman Miller Aeron. That's a good idea. Self-preservation was um, artificially selected out of these animals like thousands of years ago. <laughs> put, your, put your windpipe right under the, the chair leg. Okay. Dan's throwing shade at you on his stream. This, this website, it's been about drama for too long, man. We need to make it about unity again. That being said, what's he saying? Because I need to respond. Did you see Planet of the Base video? We, well, we've talked about Planet of the Base uh, yesterday, and I think on Friday as well. That being said, what you know what I was thinking? Is that it's been a long time since I feel like the internet has been so genuine. And I know that sounds crazy. But usually on Twitter, the thing that everybody's talking about is some idiot eating detergent, right? That's basically like the, it's like, check out what the world's dumbest moron said today, 70,000 likes, dunk, 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 it becomes part of the like zeitgeist. I feel like since Barbie 
Oppenheimer and then like the, the Euro dance parody. We've been in like a two week plus period where people, the, the main ingredient on Twitter has been like an, a genuine appreciation for media. Like people are sharing viral videos that are just like earnestly sort of funny instead of somebody testifying before Congress and like getting so nervous that they throw up all over their white shirt or something like that. Like it's, it's I'm not saying that this is indicative of the fact that the culture is having like an enormous shift that's never going to revert in the opposite direction. I'm just saying it's a nice sort of change of pace versus what it normally is. This is a country in northern Africa. I think you are Libya. If you're not Libya, you're like Algeria. Oh no, <laughs> it's 10,000 kilometers away from Libya. This is Guyana. Mmm, south of Guyana. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hello to the gamers, hello? We're back. Did you see me get the answer right? I, I looked, I typed Uruguay. We did not. And then I said, go oh, Uruguay! And then I looked in the bottom right and I was, it was just like dropping frames, dropping frames, dropping frames. We just saw mm, south of Guyana. That was the last thing we heard. Well, very suspicious. Me when I'm competing in a Twitch world competition for gifted subscriptions. Oh, sorry, I got the right answer. Did you guys see that? My internet died. It actually did though. Children of the Corn to Suburban Commando. Now, Suburban Commando, all I know is that Hulk Hogan is in it. But Children of the Corn, I don't know anybody. So that's rough. I'm trying to, I'm looking closely. And I'm telling you, I don't know who this guy is. And I don't know who you are. So we're going to have to try to get the Hulk Hogan, which I don't think is going to be easy. Okay, we have an actress who's been in things. And nobody else. Okay, so we can go Linda Hamilton. Oh, here's, here's the way it goes, okay? It's got to be like this. Linda Hamilton, Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, The Expendables, a professional wrestler, and then surely we can get from one professional wrestler actor to something that Hulk Hogan is also in. Then you search Hulk Hogan. If you don't see, Hulk, if you don't see Terry Bolia, then we scroll down a little bit, okay? Find the professional wrestler. We go Randy Couture. <laughs> it's not how you spell his name or pronounce his name, is it? It's, it's it got to be Randy Couture, right? It's not Couture. Like Haute Couture. Oh, man. Okay, and then take me way back. Three geezers. I didn't see that one, to be honest with you. Uh, I, wait, I see Dave Batista. Or is that maybe that's just Randy Couture? Of course he was in, oh wait, here we go. The Scorpion King 2, Rise of a Warrior. Big Stan starring Rob Schneider. That looks like a tasteful film. Big Stan, I just wanna know who's in this one. Holy cow. Um, Big Stan, now remember, we're trying to get to Hulk Hogan. That's a real problem, because I can't really name a movie that Hulk Hogan was in. Hulk Hogan is in Suburban Commando. Olivia Munn, everybody! Olivia Munn! <laughs> Bob Sapp, musical guest! Richard Kind! Honestly, I just, I, I think I'm, I think I'm rinsed. Here's what I think we can do. Flip it and try to get to Linda Hamilton. 
we, I, here's the thing. People are going to say we should have started here. But the truth of the matter is, if we started here, my ass had no idea that Linda Hamilton was in Children of the Corn. I would have, I would have found myself in exactly the same sort of position, unless I got hit by like a lightning bolt. So I genuinely think the easiest... I bet Hulk Hogan has been in a movie with someone who's been in The Expendables. Like maybe The Rock's most electrifying matches. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Expend... Really? Summer Game Fest 2022? Okay, here it's Meeting Stone Cold. Steve Austin. Expendables. Arnold, Terminator 2, Linda Hamilton, Children of the Corn. If I had to watch all of these movies um, in order to get this done, I would rather die, personally. But if you wanted to get there in two, you could go Children of the Corn, Peter Horton, Children of the Dark, Roy Dotris, who just happened to be in Suburban Commando. He played Neighbor Number 4. Rocky Three, Jesus? Or what do you want me to do? I looked over in chat to see what the movie th uh, was called, Thunder in Paradise. People are like, why is he not acknowledging Rocky Three? Because it would be the worst fucking stream of all time. If I just said, hmm, I don't know how to connect these, and then someone in chat said Rocky Three, and I said, oh, right, Rocky Three, and I just did it. <laughs> you do know actual terrorists have streamed on this site? Okay. They probably shopped at Walmart, too. That doesn't mean I got... Uh, principles when it comes to getting a bag of gala apples for 99 cents a pound what is steel that's what i'm saying did you know isis breathed oxygen once as well hmm curious honey crisp or better brother my ass is is buying apples at walmart they're all gonna taste like sand okay it's captain toad treasure tracker it's Alice Madness Returns. It's um, Greedfall. Day of the Damn Tentacle? I never, in a hundred years, would not have gotten this. Only point-and-click adventure game I played as a child. Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist. Goaded theme song. Uh, 900 floppy disks to play. And I remember, even as a child... I remember having to look up online how to like open an outhouse door and it was like, take the chewing gum in your inventory and apply it to the hairpin. Dangle the hairpin over the sewer grate outside of the saloon and you'll pick up the outhouse door key. You apply the outhouse door key to the outhouse and then you'll open the door and somebody in their underpants will go, close that and that'll open up the next step. And I said, fuck you, Freddy Fargus, Frontier Pharmacist. I'm never playing another point and click adventure game as long as I live. You had the internet as a kid? Yeah. I'm 34. They made ships like this back in the day. Like this is... I have to assume that this is San Francisco just from the hills. But I, again, it's, it's chrono guesser. I mean, chrono photo, not time guesser. So we don't need a position. These buses are from like the 1970s. Maybe it's 1980s. I'm going to give this a 1975. Oh! This is a boy looking through a binder of sports cards. This is a flea market. I used to go to card shops, flea markets, buy hockey cards and stuff like that. But this is not what things look like in my time. Although this dude actually looks like me as a child for sure. <laughs> Like, this dude right here is straight out of, like, pre-my birth year for sure. But then this outfit right here is Stranger Things coded. Like, this is, this is the 1980s or maybe the late 1970s. I'm going to go 81 on this. Holy cow, he's insane. Now, I simply don't know these players on the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I got to say, this is approximately, like, a 2001 it's 2002. Me personally, I'm going to go ahead and say this is 19... Well, I don't know where this is. It's not 1996. I don't know why I went there. But I think this, is, this would be post-D-Day, which would put us like 44, 45. 
the reconquest of Western Europe was like 44 into the early part of 45. So let's say 44. 43, oh. <laughs> okay, we've seen this one 20 times. This is, <laughs> is this not, oh no, no, we, we've seen this one before, but it's not a uh, time guesser, so we don't need the location. This is like 1999 or something, right? 2001, all right, we got 4621 today, that's pretty good. I don't know how many times I've, just, I've seen that picture, man. Today, I'd like to go from Armenia to Denmark. All right, all right. Denmark, you must go to Germany. There's no other option. What? Excuse me? You could also go to Russia? Or you can go Sweden to Russia. Okay, well, we're doing it a different way. We go again. We're going Germany. Two. Let me let me fucking think about this first. We're probably going through Russia, because we're gonna go Germany, fucking Poland, because it's big. Poland borders Russia on that weird little like exclave, right? Yes, it does. Okay, that's. I mean, now it's very simple. <laughs> you go Turkey. No, 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 no. Hang on. Because this is like, okay, so can you rotate me? Because I can't fucking picture this shit, man. Like, this is the Black Sea. So you got like a, like a, a Georgia somewhere in here. And we're, we're connected. We're not connected? How are we not connected? How, what's the problem? We've made it from Armenia to Georgia to Russia. Russia connects to Poland. Like, they're, they're, they're adjacent. They're adjacent to each other. Exclaves don't count. It's fucking filled in, man. Me, when I play a game and I get something sensible wrong, people are like, oh, no, there's an edge case that means that, that, that you're wrong. You need to factor in the edge case. Me, when I get an edge case, that means I'm right. Oh, no, that one doesn't count. That's an edge case. Make up your mind, Malcolm Gladwell. How are you going to walk from Moscow to Denmark? Brother, sometimes they start you in Iceland. How the fuck are you going to walk from Reykjavik to, you know, Gabon? You're going to do the same thing that you would do here. You'd hop on a fucking airplane. Anyway, it's... Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, Belarus... Belarus. I think maybe any of them would work. But we'll take Belarus. Why should it work that way? Because it's the border. It's the border. You can get from, you can walk from Russia to Poland. If anything, you can't walk from Russia to fucking Russia. That's not my fault. It's like being like, oh, you can't use Indonesia because you started on fucking Sumatra, but now you're trying to connect through Java. What are you supposed to do? Get water shoes? I don't know. I didn't make the borders of the country. I'm just representing them. <clears throat> Slash marker. Let's school. Hey, let's school or let's not and say we did or something. Anyway, this is... <laughs> sorry, I just... We played a lot of games with let's in the title, and I always want to say let's not and say we did, even though it's not ins it's too insulting to the game, because I haven't played the game yet. I think in the 90s, we had more, and this is not a like, oh, Gen Z is like messed up, because they're just figuring it out the same way we were figuring it out, and the same way we're still figuring it out. All I'm going to say is if you're comparing Gen Z's withering takedowns to millennials withering takedowns, I think the millennials, we got some good ones. Let's not and say we did is like, that will crush your self-esteem instantly. No blank Sherlock. You ever hit your friend with something? You'll be like, hey, did you know that um, Jupiter is made of gas and the rings of Saturn are made of ice particulates? Then they'll hit you with a no, no blank Sherlock and you're like, well, well I, I guess I'm an idiot. I didn't realize I was just trying to like bring some uh, knowledge to you and all of a sudden I'm, I'm the dickhead. Or like whatever. I guess Gen X has kind of invented whatever, but regardless. Now, what is, I don't know what does Gen Z say if you're sus. They say like, oh, say less. 
something like that. Least narcissistic streamer. I see that one a lot. Who asked? Who asked is like, I think that's from like the 2000s or the 90s as well. You give me the ick. Okay, that one hurts. Because I definitely felt like yesterday when we had big burly furniture movers coming in, bringing in heavy objects to make our house look nice. And uh, my wife was supervising that and I was downstairs ranting about the public's reaction to Toy Story 4 not being good enough. I felt like there was a chance I might be giving my wife the ick in that moment. So that, one's, that one hurts to the core. <laughs> That one cut me deep, honestly. Anyway, and the yeah, there the workers are coming in. Here's the, here's that sofa you ordered, and I'm like, Olivia Man, everybody, Olivia Man, Olivia Man. All right, new game. And what do you? By the way, Led School it just came out on Steam. You you are a school administrator. You might not have had that much fun in school. I don't know, but it's different when you're the one that's that's holding the diploma. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm saying I'm the king. I'm saying absolute power corrupts absolutely or something. Name. Ho Borvet. Gender male. Heights. Let's be honest, the height's pretty good. Weight-wise. Listen, I'm, I'd, I wouldn't say that my hip bones are jutting out of my pelvis like that. I think that's probably cause to see a doctor if you can actually see the top of your head or your hip joint. Put me like right around there, maybe. That seems about right. And then hair color. Oh, representation! Baldness, but the baldness is not represented as a red circle with a line through it. It's represented as an actual bald head. Thank you! It finally happened! Clothing. Hmm. It's not really my kind of drip there. That's not my tempo. I would say my tempo is honestly more like that lately. But they, he looks so... I mean, give me the glasses, for one. That's too dorky. Like, those are not my glasses. I know you're gonna say those are my glasses, but those are not my glasses. Those are definitely not my glasses. But these are like... This is the Lily Pichu, and I'm not rocking the Lily Pichu. Third is closest. So, but then square glasses are so... <laughs> so dorky, man. These ones are even dorkier. All right, fine, I'll go with that. And then I would say, well, I love the way that that looks, for sure. And then outline color. I don't, I don't really mess around with all that. Let's talk about school uniforms. Honestly, let's not and say we did. <laughs> I don't wanna open up a whole can of worms. <laughs> My school did not have uniforms which was great because I got to wear a button-up shirt with short sleeves that was all black except at the bottom near the hemline it had orange flames coming off of it. And then right near like where a breast pocket would normally be there was Super Saiyan level 2 Goku charging up a Kamehameha. Ha! Now before we get started here I have to ask you an honest question, okay? I'm not saying I suffered in childhood. I had a fine childhood and teenage years. But I'm just trying to see if anybody went to a shittier high school than Malf and I did. Like, as long as we're talking about facilities in our high school, we had, I would almost call it zero facilities, okay? We had a gymnasium, we had a weight room. That's about it. And we had a cafeteria, there were 80 kids in my graduating class. Can anybody beat me? We had no weight room. You a KCVI boy? Listen. If I went to KCVI, you think I'd be complaining? We go to KCVI for the damn Reach for the Top Trivia Regional Tournament. We go there, the, the cafeteria sells vegetables instead of just like boiled hamburgers in aluminum bags. The school is uh, downtown in the city, so it's got access to all sorts of like quick service restaurants outside of it. I was not a KCVI boy, okay? I was not, I took a bus 45 minutes to get to a school in the middle of nowhere. You know what they had the audacity to call the road it was on? Main Street. Because sometimes, Kate told me that she went to a high school. The high school was adjacent to a community college. So for lunch, walk over to the community college. There would be like a Tim Hortons, a Subway, uh, like 10 different restaurants, a Taco Time, a Papa John's, a blah, blah. You know that, that you can ask Malf, by the way. 
again, it was fine. Like, my school was fine. I'm just saying, compared to, like, other high schools that I hear about, it was not very impressive with amenities. Malf and I, at lunchtime, we used to get in his car the minute lunchtime started, drive 27 minutes to the next town over, which was the closest subway, get the subway to go, get back in his car, drive 27 minutes back to our school. There's five minutes left in our lunch break. Eat the sandwich as quick as you can and then go to algebra class. Okay, here we go. No weight room, undersized gym, graduated 72, K to 12 in the same school, can't afford buses, building is 110 years old. Okay, I think you got me beat. K to 12 in the same school is madness. Cause like that's, that means you had like four year olds up to 18 year olds in the same building, which just seems like an administrative nightmare. My school didn't have a, a chemistry lab. That's pretty bad too. I went to an alternative high school and I graduated valedictorian because I was the only person with above a 50% attendance rate. Yeah, but I bet you had like yoga classes at 9 a.m. or something like that. <laughs> My mom told me that when she was a teenager, she went to an alternative high school and they didn't even have desks. They were experimenting with like letting kids just sit. Like the, the classrooms were built with like carpeted... Uh, layers and and like staircases and stuff so people would just be like chilling on the carpet and then like doing their work i don't even know i don't it was the, it was like the early 1980s holy cow it gets worse k to 12 in the same school one side of the school was a cemetery the other one was a police station couldn't afford the legally required french classes so we just went to french and sat around <laughs> See, I was going to say that, and that, that's a, in Canada, or at least in parts of Canada, you do have to get a French credit in ninth grade in order to graduate. I was going to say our school sucked because we had no other languages except French. And then in ninth grade, there was a, a French class. If you took 10th, 11th, or 12th grade French, you were in the same class as everybody that was in all the other grades. Sometimes Kate will be like, I took Japanese in high school. And I was like, you took Japanese in high school? And she's like, yeah, I tried German, but I didn't like it. I'm like, you had a German teacher in your high school? We had one French teacher. And 95% of the class was in English. <laughs> Sorry, we should play the game or whatever. Hello, I'm Edison Liu, the school's teaching consultant. It seems you're ready to recruit some students. They are a school's foundation. Visit the local community to get started. Hey kids, wanna come to my school? <laughs> This is where the potential students of our community are gathered. There is a lot of children in this community who can start in our school soon. Meal Packer brings packed food from home, so food services demand decreased, but they are forgetful. They learn slower in humanities courses. That's fine. You can just uh, be the next Oppenheimer or whatever. Click Admit All. All available students have been admitted. It is time to assign new students to a classroom and pick a homeroom teacher. Hang on, you got me all twisted up here. Assign all year one students in the class. Select class members. Select all. Homeroom teachers are needed to manage students, otherwise they will have disciplinary issues. Now assign a teacher to the class as their homeroom teacher. We'll go with uh, Mrs. Lin. 18-year-old high school teacher. I don't see the problem with this. <laughs> Mudford might not be rich, but we will never lose to anyone when it comes to a thirst for knowledge. Head, hard knocks is truly the hope to change our lives. It's pitch black. I guess they, there's no window. Okay, let's pause it up real quick. They can't see inside of the classroom because there's no window. Are doors windows? Yeah, yeah, doors are windows. Here you go. Maybe, maybe like, I don't know if I need to manage like a light bulb or something like that, but how about a couple of windows right there? Now you can sort of see. <laughs> Right? Right? It's not pitch black anymore. You can figure it out. No, it's still pitch black, brother. Well, you know what? Let's... I'm, I'm a simple man. It seems to make sense to me that they should keep the same schedule every day. But maybe I'm the crazy person? That's a horrible week? How is this a horrible week, brother? It's... It's... Science and humanities, what more do you need? It's too dark in here, Headmaster. Can we have some windows? You got two windows and you got light bulbs. What's your problem? 
Discipline has been bad lately. It's literally day one. Hand in your homework. It's teacher, it's day one! They're just literally walking out through like the hole in the front of the building. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> Start fixing stuff? Hang on. Hello. I'm Miss Sweets, the school's lifestyle consultant. The students request a tea room so that they may have drinking water. What's next? Nature calls. The students need toilets. Please hurry. Facility. Okay, how about, we'll start by building the women's room, because if I didn't, people would call me a misogynist. Minimum size, 12 squares. <laughs> I promise I didn't intentionally make it as small as possible. It just, it just fits nicely here. Three to nine female toilets. There you go. Can you, can you fit in there? Yeah, you can fit. It's not even bad. It's completely fine. And then the boys' room. Here's the thing, boys rule, girls drool. So the men's room, of course, is definitely gonna be exactly the same, because it fits nicely. Some students are secretly playing a video game. All right, Miss Lynn. She's, Miss Lynn's barging in. She's gonna stop gamer one, two, and three. What are you looking at? Oh, that's the new game. I mean, it is break. I feel like they should- OH, SHE'S SPRINTING! STOP! I'm sorry. Don't do it again. I won't. Miss Lin has stopped the scourge of video gaming. Delinquency resolved. Path end. Gain one demerit. Discipline increased. <laughs> they were secretly gaming at recess. Makes me sick, man. Remember to assign your kids to their classes. Oh, right, my mistake. Hang on, you're absolutely right. Pause me. Let me look at my, um, I can do this. It's class one, and then to assign your students. It's very simple. You simply click on right here, and then, She's mildly stressed. That's fine. It's day two of the job. You should be stressed. I can do this. I, can, I just need to figure it out. There's so many damn menus, man. Student information. Class members. Seven of 16. Status. Knowledge. Stats. The other left. Oh! The other left. Under the calendar. Headmaster's inventory. Build. Course. Class one of one. There's gotta be a way, man. There's gotta be a way. Under the calendar. Okay, yes, this is a calendar. Under the calendar is management. Then management status, classroom. Then click on the classroom, it takes me back to this. Click on the students. This is Peter Scott. Okay, so if you want to get Anna, William, Kenneth, Jerry, and Dennis into the class, just click on Peter, and then click Select All. There you go. There's no problem. Is, you know what it is? It's because Peter is like the headmaster. He, he's the ringleader, I should say. He's the one who says, hey guys, come on to this class. He's the, he's the straw that stirs the drink. Now I understand it. Okay. Training course complete. Okay, pause me. That means I, I, I'm going to figure this UI out, man. It's very, it's not hard at all. You're simply gonna go to management. You're gonna go to headmaster's office. You're gonna find yourself. You're gonna click on yourself. So no, I'm, I wanna be the headmaster. That's my mistake. We're gonna go to headmaster's inventory. I have a, a three video games, a panda egg and a cat egg. Okay, I am gonna go to, I can't fucking do it, man. I can't fucking do it. I gotta click here. I'm gonna, wait, no, 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 no. I'm gonna go to my, I'm gonna go to my class. I'm gonna find my teacher. I'm gonna, no, you're, you're, Sell the video games for cash. Genius. It sounds like the vitamin C song. As we go on, we remember all the times we had together as our lives change. Manage department number one. You should... 
manage. Teach, teach better. I, yeah, I have to drag you under you like that. Okay, it's a Gantt chart. I, you, you think I haven't taken a project management class? I understand how these organizational hierarchies work. It's not a Gantt chart. Well, listen, I didn't get a 100 in the class, okay? I think I did get like a 97, but so did almost everybody else. I'm in project management right now, and 80% of the class uses chat GPT on every single prompt. Uh, that's because they're software engineers. Like, no disrespect. I know that, like, because I always see the posts on Twitter that are like, look at how good the conversational uh, dialogue is with chat GPT. You can sniff... Right now, I'm not saying forever. Right now, you can sniff AI-generated text 100 miles away if you have any kind of, like, literary sensibilities around you. That's all I'm saying. I see it on Twitter all the time. I see someone with, like, a... a they always have a blue check. They always reply to, like, every viral video with, like, some kind of essay. And I'm like, you're a damn robot, man. Chat GPT be like, women are my favorite guy. So true. And I'll just call this chatter dumb. I'm out. I, see, I didn't call them dumb. I said 80% of their classmates are... I wouldn't say dumb. Maybe it's if you're using chat GPT and you're still doing okay in your courses. I guess, like, if your only goal is to do well in your courses, then you would consider yourself smart. Notice how I didn't take a stand on that one. <laughs> would you be using chat GPT in a management class right now? I mean, if I was... 19 and I thought I was smarter than the project management class Then I might use chat GPT so I had more time to do stuff that was fulfilling to me at that time like play Honkai Star Rail as Like a as a 34 year old. No, cuz like I have options, right? Like I would only be taking the class if the class was on a path that helped me eventually get to a goal that I found fulfilling as an adult so like for, for it, it, I saw it all the time when I was taking night classes. But you would see, like, adults show up for night class and then just, like, immediately load up YouTube on their laptop and just watch YouTube the whole time while the teacher was talking. And I was like, brother, you spent, like, $550 of your own money and then you came to the class for three hours and just sat in the lecture hall and didn't pay attention. Like, what are you doing? You're just, you're just wasting your one life on planet Earth. When you're like 19, I get it. Well, you're like, you know, 25 and you're already working in like another career. That's crazy. They just want the piece of paper. Well, I don't know. Just pay attention then. <laughs> it's not, I don't know. I feel like if you're like an air conditioner repairman and you're like, I want to pivot careers, I'm going to become like a software engineer. But then as soon as you go to your software engineering classes, you're like, this is boring as hell. Wouldn't you be better served finding the arbitrage from just running your own business as an air conditioner repairman? Like stop working as a contractor under somebody else and get like a loan from the bank and buy a van and, you know, take out a Facebook ad or something like that and then go into business for yourself instead of going to, I'm going to pivot and become a software engineer, but I, my heart's not in it. That is true though. Project management class... I, although I had a fun time in project management class, the average project management module was like, um, Susan from HR has input on your software project. The input doesn't make sense to you as an engineer. How do you respond? And then like half of the class was like, I tell Susan to know her role within the organization as a human resource specialist and let me do my job. And you're like, that's why we, uh, we all have to take the class because of you, buddy. If it wasn't for you, you could do like a 10 minute oral exam where they just have a conversation and you would be, you would be like, well, I would say that's an interesting idea, Susan. And I would make her feel like her concerns were heard while simultaneously uh, sending like a little nonverbal signal to the rest of my team to let them know, don't worry, we're never going to implement this shit at all. Just make her feel like she's part of the process, right? And they would be like, okay, you don't need to take the course. It's that simple. Oh, excuse me, there's a dog on campus? The cat is so cute, should we keep it? Yes. Please give it a name. That's Tomo. 
Did you ever have to tell off your students? What do you mean by tell off? Like I'm the adult in the situation. I had to discipline some students or like, you know, reprimand them or threaten to call their teacher or call their parents or whatever, send them to the principal's office. But I will say like as a kid, school is like your life. I don't mean like academics are all you care about, but I mean like school is like your job. It is your social gathering place. It's everything, right? And then after school is fun and games too. But like that's your, everything happens in school. So I get that it feels serious to a kid, but it was so annoying as a teacher to just be like trying to teach English to eight year olds and they're like acting up in class and then like making it out as if like I'm their biggest enemy. I'm like, I'm not your biggest enemy. I'm literally just trying to teach you English for 40 minutes and then like never see you again until next Tuesday. Like if you could just relax for 40 minutes, do the worksheet and stop trying to make us like ops for no reason. I don't get, you, you're, like the kid would like cut up in class and then you'd be like, if you're gonna cut up in class again, I'm gonna send you to the principal's office. Then they cut up in class again a minute later and you're like, go to the principal's office and then they start crying and you're like, the hell? What did you think was gonna happen? Like, there's no, there's completely preventable. What does cut up mean? You know, they're talking back, giving you sass, not following the rules, trying to entertain their classmates instead of do the work, the regimented work that's supposed to turn them into a good societal drone. Where are those kids now? I don't know, they're probably like productive members of the society. That was like 11 years, I had to check the calendar to see the year. <laughs> It's like, that was 12 years ago, man. Some of those kids are like 26 now. They're your age, that's crazy. What's wrong with the bathroom? It's dirty. Okay, well, I don't know, research a fucking like plunger or something. I can't help but notice the game's a little sexist. Like, why is the girl's bathroom clean but the boy's bathroom is dirty? You know why? Listen, I don't know if this is true. I'm trying hard to beat the casual misogyny allegations, okay? I have always heard, and by heard I mean read on Reddit, that the girl's bathroom is like a fucking biohazard situation. I'm not saying the boy's bathroom is clean, because it's not. But I've always heard that like the true nightmares happen in the girl's bathroom. They'd throw TP on top of the shit like a, pyra like a pyramid? <laughs> what? I will say, okay? I do, we're going back a few years here. Um, well, like a decade plus. But when I was in university, okay? I lived with a bunch of guys, one girl, but she was basically one of the lads, right? Our bathroom, there's seven fucking dudes in it. It was not clean. There's seven toothbrushes seven different kinds of toothpaste, four different flosses, 12 different body washes, caffeinated, shampoo, all in one, conditioner, moisturizer, etc., etc. Anyway, but our bathroom was like, it was cluttered, but it was not like dirty. But then in university, I'd go over to like my girlfriend's apartment and it's just, they got like, the, the sink has like 15 different soaps on it and only like half of them have the lid closed. The rest of them look like like the spout exploded in some kind of like pink liquid and then one of them's like blue and then here's a silver liquid and it smells like a, a hair salon and then you look at the bathtub and there's like another 15 bottles in the bathtub. You're like, how many different conditioners do you need? And like, why aren't you closing the damn lid? And then like the drain is all clogged with hair and stuff. I think, by and large, on average, amortized out over the place, the space of an entire house, a single woman will tend, on average, to be tidier than a single man. But I do think that the bathroom is like, I don't know, maybe men have like an advantage there because we tend to use less product, at least if you're a millennial or a boomer. We have a huge advantage. Okay, brother, give yourself some credit. Like, life's hard for us, too, I'm saying. <laughs> I know, I had a male roommate that would shave his beard and leave the hair all over the sink. Yeah, oh, I mean, that was me for a while as well. It's pretty gross. I'm not gonna deny it. 
I was like 17, 18 years old, you know? You just figure thing out, things out as you go. Then one of your roommates goes like, hey, dude, can you clean the beard hair out of the sink? It's fucking gross. And then you go, oh, that makes sense. And you never do it again. <laughs> I will say too, I want to protect myself. My wife is cleaner than me without a doubt and her bathroom is cleaner than mine. And she's got like more products than I have so it should be hard for her to keep it clean but she does a better job of it than I do. But sometimes, you know, it'd be like, hey, there's a party happening at girl's house tonight. Bring, uh, bring your whole house over. We bring our whole house over. We go to the bathroom and I'm like, you live like this? Kitchen, spotless. Bedroom, spotless. Bed made. Fucking cushions on the couch. Doilies on the table. Placemats and stuff like that. They don't put the pizza box in the fridge. They take the slices of pizza out, put them in Tupperwares, put the Tupperware in the fridge so it's structured all nicely. Then you open up the bathroom and it's like a, a Pantene Pro-V factory exploded in there. That's so true. A woman's bathroom, <laughs> it's, now I'm like, it's too, it's too misogynist. I can't say it. A, a girl's bathroom is kind of like uh, Oppenheimer meets Barbie. I didn't say it, chat said it. I simply plus two'd it. How many pull-ups can you do? I don't want to answer the question because only skinny motherfuckers be asking you how many pull-ups you can do. You never see a dude who weighs like 120 pounds. It's like, hey, what's your one rep max on squats? They're always like, hey, did you know I could do 72 push-ups in one single set? And I'm like, of course you can, brother. You weigh what I did in the seventh grade. And what's your deadlift? Like, oh, I'm, listen, I'm not a deadlifter, but I'd say if I do approximate, it's probably like 500 pounds because I go rock climbing a lot, so my grip strength is really high. We can all be strong in our own way, okay? What's your Peloton wattage? Now you're talking. I only did 80 minutes today instead of 90 because I woke up a little late. Hang on. I just got stung by lightning, but in that last uh, in that last 20 minute ride, I think my average wattage was 229. I set a I set a 20 minute PB after setting a 20 minute PB a month ago. Mr. Beast is suing his delivery partner for those whack ass Mr. Beast burgers. That's so funny. Like just not the lawsuit. I'm sure that's very stressful, but just the the way you phrased it. I never had the Mr. Beast burger. All that shit to me seems like a 2020 fever dream where we all went like a little bit fucking insane. Um, good on Anna Hill. She received a rudimentary management certificate. But like, isn't the thing with Mr. Beast Burger is that the reason that it was able to be offered in every major city worldwide was because of the fact that they all operated out of ghost kitchens that were in restaurants where the restaurant didn't really have customers because of the fact that it was like COVID lockdowns, right? So isn't every Mr. Beast Burger going to be different? Like I get the fact that there's a standardized procedure and recipe and to some extent the ingredients and stuff like that, but I, I just never really felt compelled to get a Mr. Beast Burger because I was like, the Mr. Beast Burger in... Los Angeles is going to be different than the Mr. Beast Burger in Vancouver. So like, if I'm going to eat some crappy food, I don't want to do it from a ghost kitchen situation because as soon as I bring it up on stream, they're gonna, people are going to be like, well, my Mr. Beast Burger was really good. And I'll be like, where do you live? And they're like, Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm like, well, I don't know, maybe they're using a Five Guys ghost kitchen in Charlotte, North Carolina, but here they're using like a Burger King or something. I don't know. Mine was emitting green smoke. You didn't get the Mr. Beast Burger. That's, that's a crazy humble gear. I mean, I think back on a lot of stuff in 2020, 2021, and I'm like, we went fucking crazy, man. I mean, it's... Get reprimanded. I don't even know what you did. Get reprimanded. It's completely understandable that society lost their mind, but, like... You know, I look back, I'm like, I was crazy. Why did I get so into the efficient market hypothesis? I guess you got nothing else to do. <laughs> Ghost kitchens popped off. Real estate went up 35% in, like, a single year. The stock market went down 30% and then went up 150% in like eight months and stuff like that. Of course, it's going to mess with people's minds. Can you add stairs, please? I'm one exam away from pivoting to another game, okay? So I'm not adding, I'm not adding stairs. I do it. People in chat are saying the same. They're saying, I, I bet real money on football games played by computers.
See, like we've kind of lost our mind a little bit. Now, if you're still doing that in 2023, like I hope that that's authentic to your personality and that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But if you did that in 2020 or 2021, I forgive you without judgment because we all needed like a, a pat on the shoulder back then or a pat on the back. Jimmy Fallon was uh, hawking NFTs on his damn NBC show. I made $400 gambling on professional tag. <laughs> so, it, was fucking, it was a weird time. I think we're still digesting the insanity that we all went through. Tomo, you gotta get out of the cords, man. It's, it, brother, it's, it's been three hours of, of rubbing up against the cords. Listen, let me, let me at least put you on screen for a second here. Hello. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me pick you up. Now get out of the cords. Are you a fan of escape rooms? Yeah, I haven't done one in a long time. Maybe like four or five years. But I, I very much enjoy escape rooms. Because I feel like a well-designed escape room, it's like, an, uh, like a Dungeons and Dragons party. Like there's usually at least one to two puzzles that your own unique strengths and weaknesses will apply for. Like whenever we would go to an escape room, sometimes there would be like, um, you know, a visual puzzle you have to do. Like I remember there was one where there, you had to put like a, a samurai's armor on appropriately. And then the shadow from the armor would like reveal something. I needed Kate to solve that one like a hundred percent. But then probably like eight to ten times in every escape room, they will just give you like five to ten numbers and you have to add them together. And then they're like, people sometimes they go, oh, I don't know. How do I, what's, let's 11 plus 17 plus 30. And I'm like 58. And they're like, holy cow, I'm glad we brought this guy along. And not just because he paid. And I'm like, yes, I was useful. And then when you go to the debrief, people were like, oh, wow, great job, person A. I never would have figured out that you had to put the handcuffs on the skeleton in order to get his mouth to open up and the key to get spat out. And I'm like, yeah, good job me for adding those four two digit numbers together without like a pen and a piece of paper so that we could figure out the numeric code to put in the briefcase so that it opened up and spit out a key. Right, guys? Right. Thank God that we had someone in the group that knew how to do 16 times 8 in their heads so we knew what the password was for the safe. Exam countdown. It's time for the exams. Students taking exam. What will happen? Let's wait and see. That's a quick one. It must have been an oral exam. I wonder how the student students did during the exam. 15 of 15 students passed. Eight students got full marks. Total score plus 46. Holy cow. Look, full marks. Everybody wants to go to the Marina Heaven College of Marketing? What is this, like the North Korean education system? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Grades ranking? No, but we came last? Every student passed and we came last? This is like civilization, man. Final rank, A, excellent. Money reward, plus 9,000. No art, no sports, whatever. Mudford's community reputation has gone way up. Okay, well, listen. This is Let's School. Slash marker, Let's School. It seems fine. It doesn't seem like a game for me. I had a good time playing it. I could see it being fun. I could see you spending eight hours playing this before real just one more turn, one more turn. It's not 100% for me, and that's okay. I think it's not as good as Prison Architect, because in Prison Architect, the inmates beat themselves up with like bars of soap and stuff like that. I, something happened. I don't think it happened to me. I think it happened to the world. I don't think I've ever changed. When I played Remnant with Rob, we had a fun time the entire time. When I played Remnant with Sips and Mouth, none of us had any fun, and I, I didn't like the game. What happened? And by all accounts, the game is better. I also saw somebody say, I finally made it to the final boss of Remnant 2 and it makes me hate the rest of the game. And I was like, oh no, they did it again. Impatience? I don't think so. I think like, honestly, 
I honestly just think that a lot of, and you don't have to agree. I know because any opinion, if I talk about politics, people will be plus two, plus two, plus two, so true, so true. If I share an opinion on video games because of the way the internet culture is, it's like, let's, let's argue. This is not an invitation to argue. This is just one man's experience. Part of it might be me getting older, but I also feel like my two cents for me personally is that a lot of games that I play these days, I leave the game feeling that it's over-designed. I'm not saying every game needs to be a big red button and you press it and fireworks come out and you go <laughs> But I'm definitely like, I get that Remnant is a looter shooter. So I understand that having a lot of mechanics related to like your gear score is emblematic of the genre. But for me sometimes, it's like a little bit too much. You got a class. Okay, I can handle a class. You got different weapons. I can handle that. Every weapon has two extra slots on it to put in modifiers. Okay, I'm starting to get a little... But then also on top of that, the modifiers have three decimal places on each one, plus 0.317% chance to find uncommon loot. And I'm like, this is getting a little ridiculous. Like, just, just for me, that's all I'm saying. Just for me. If you like it, that's fine. I'm glad it's doing well. But I... I don't mind a complex game. Like, I had a, a really good time playing the Banished Vault, but like sometimes my eyes just glaze over if I'm buying a game to like play with my friends, and then it's like, hey, do you need this uh, leather overcoat I found? It's a plus 1.7% chance to do lightning damage if your gun has a, a green stock on it. And I, well, well, let me check and see if my gun has a green. No, my gun has a chartreuse stock. Does that count as green or I don't, anyway. But golf, golf is what it's all about, man. Golf is the answer. Golf is the way. Take me back to my career, please. <laughs> you know what? It's fucking too, it's fucking, I can't. Is the B button is the A button and the A button is the B button? People are trying to tell me I hate RPGs. Because I was talking about not liking Remnant. So in fact, people are gaslighting me. They said, you got overwhelmed by Divinity 2. First off, Divinity 2 is a like, somewhat complicated game. Secondly, I didn't get overwhelmed by it at all. I enjoyed uh, Divinity 2 a lot. The problem is that the first time I played it was on YouTube. And it was just like, you know, we were like, there's no shot we're going to get 900 episodes of this done. Hang on, I gotta take out Bubba Watson. It's just not gonna happen the way that the YouTube doesn't reward that style of content, unfortunately. And then with Team Unity, you know, it was Dan. And Dan will own that too. We were playing Divinity, everybody was having a good time, but Dan's heart wasn't in it, so which made it, I mean, it was a drag for the rest of us to get anything done because everybody has to be there for the quest to get completed. Can you move the mouse pointer? No, there is no mouse pointer. Just like there is no spoon. I can't move the mouse pointer. The only thing that you can move is your mind. You think you're just getting tired of games? No, not at all. I, I love video games. Even though every time I play video games I like, people say this is a video game for toddlers, and they take a, a big hit off of a lemon pound cake flavored vaporizer cartridge, and then say, I play games for adults, and then sit down and play some Warhammer spreadsheet for like 25 hours, and then go jerk off to hentai. Anyway, sorry, I got a lot of trauma like associated with subjecting my, living my entire life in the crucible of anonymous online criticism directed at my intelligence. We're working that out, you know, not you and me, but me and my therapist. Anyway, so I don't think I'm getting tired of video games at all. I think it's just as I've gotten older, I've lost the desire to really pretend to be part of the zeitgeist by like playing every new popular AAA game that's coming out. Because, you know, for a while I was like, that's, I, I'm a gamer. I love games. I've got to see how the new Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon plays. And then I'd play it for like an hour and be like, it seems good if you're a fan of the genre. But then, and then I would never touch it again. And I'd go back to like the Binding of Isaac. So I think what, I'm do, what I've learned, and it's taken me a while, is like over time, I've acknowledged like which kind of games are no longer for me. You know, just because you don't vibe with Remnant 2 or even like Baldur's Gate, that doesn't mean you don't like games. Play play some Wilmot's Warehouse or something like that. Play PGA Tour. You can still... And, and just, you know, remove yourself as part of the gaming community. That's the secret. If you And I'm still working on it myself. But if you can do that and still just play video games like the way my parents do, 
where like once a year they'll be like, I want to play a golf video game, and then they'll get um, like an eight-year-old Tiger Woods game and play it for an hour and be like, that was a lot of fun. But then you complain there's nothing to play. I don't really complain there's nothing to play. Remember, I'm on my non-neurotypical arc. I could play Super Auto Pets for my entire streaming work. We can have a great time. The only thing is I take psychic damage when I do it because of the fact that chat's like, sap again, I'm going to leave. And then they type people leave, which makes me think that my career's ending. But then they stay. So it's like a, just a gaslight nonstop. Really, the reason I add in variety is not for me, it's for you. Because your brains are so normal that you need to constantly have like new thing. Whereas I'm like, oh my God, ham sandwich for lunch again? This is the greatest day of my life. We appreciate it. Some of you do. Cracker Jacks doesn't. Cracker Jacks, red name. Viewing without video. Flare. Red name, Cracker Jacks, spelled with a K. Underscore at the end. Can he do it? Noted. Also, like, there's a banter new game continuum. You play new game, people are always like, I'm so excited for you to play Baldur's Gate 3. But I've been there before. I'm, I think if I had the time, I would play Baldur's Gate 3. Like my, If I was 17 and it was summer vacation, I would play and finish Baldur's Gate 3. And for life, it would probably be one of my favorite games of all time. Right now, though, the idea of playing it for chat makes me want to die. Just because I know, A analytics will be bad and then b like right now we're having a conversation there's some witty repartee you know there's some banter there's some jabs there's people are taking offense people are leaving people are coming back and saying i just left dan stream etc etc but as soon as we start playing uh baldur's gate 3 every comment is going to be like first off there's going to be 27 minutes between each chat message and every chat message is going to be from like the same dude and his name is going to be like theon Greyjoy of the north or something like that and it's going to say actually your breastplate scales with your strength stat um your strength stat is really good but you need to have a crushing weapon instead of a sharp weapon for fighting enemies that are made exclusively of bones you're still specced with a sword um which you were using which was good because you were fighting like enemies that bled but skeletons don't bleed so you should switch to your mace right now and then i'd be like anybody else anybody else anybody else Anybody, anybody eaten a ghost kitchen recently? Anybody got any thoughts on ghost kitchens or something? So in the same way, and I don't mean, this is just the human condition, I think. In the same way that you complain about me playing new stuff, and you're like, no, you just, seriously, if you just gave Prey a chance, it would really pop off. And I'm like, I don't think it would. I have the exact same thing, but in, inverted for chat, where my experience tells me that sometimes chat does know what they want to see, but most of the time, they don't know what they want to see. They think they want to see Baldur's Gate 3, but then like two hours into Baldur's Gate 3, they're like, I'm going to go leave to watch a streamer um, like drink their own piss or something like that. I'm not willing to drink my own piss. But if you made me and that will put them ahead of their rival. choose between doing a full campaign of, drink, of Baldur's Gate 3 or drinking my own piss, I would have to think about it. Drinking my own piss once? How long would I be sick for? Probably not too long. <laughs> Probably like a couple hours, maybe. Probably not at all. It's true, I'm very well hydrated. Going with the six iron here. My piss is probably just, it's pretty close here. to just being like sparkling water at this point. Oh! Hey, look at me. Lovely Momo, hello. Ghibli and lovely Momo, welcome to the stream. This guy does not uh, leave me alone. <laughs> All he sits there for like 15 minutes, then he comes right here and just spins in a circle until I pet him. Our leader is a couple of shots up at this stage. Chad, Chad, like Tomo there, like he's right on the screen. Too. They do, they love it. He knows like where the camera is. Olivia Munn, Tomo, Ghibli, lovely Momo, lovely. Tomo, he is lovely, folks. He is, we love him. We love our Tomos. We love our Rukas. We don't know where he is, but we love him too. And Olivia Munn and Rip and Ripley. 
Why is his name Pro Golfer? They say, um, dress for the job you want. Stop talking about Bubba Watson, bro. You're, you're creeping everybody out. You're scaring the host. La wrong generation? Persimmon Woods, Bellotta Golf Balls, and, and Blades, and I think that he would be an even bigger impact on the game than he currently is, if that's even possible. I watch what he does I'm in with trouble. modern equipment, and it's mind-blowing. What is this guy talking about? He, he has a lot of stories. He used to play on the Pro Tour. In many ways, he's the Brian Kibler of PGA Tour 2K23. And just try and hit these big sweeping hooks and fades. and I mean, it's just unbelievable what he can do with the golf ball. I think it's a little insulting that I... um the best in the game. I mean, I'm minus one. It's not amazing, but it's like pretty good. But then like while I'm putting, all this dude can talk about is Bubba Watson, who's two strokes back of me. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm doing a, a, a decent job today. Chibli, Brian Kibler, Olivia Munn, everybody's here. Everybody's here today. Chibli and Brian Kibler. Lovely Momo, Ripley. Ridley. Of course, don't try and go out and try and hit too many heroic shots or go after too many flag sticks because if you don't Beautiful. Know Look at this. What the consequences are if you don't pull off that shot, well, shame on you. If this bit so gets worse every time. Obviously have it could be a lot. It's it, it still got a lot of room to go. I could do the bit while playing Baldur's Gate 3. Some dark elf is trying to explain to me how the winds of Nymeria have blown and caused corruption to rise within the lands of Gibbleglox. And I'm the whole thing. He's missing the lore. Chibli, Chibli, Galadriel. Chibli, lovely Momo and Galadriel. Everybody's here today. Avengers golf game would kind of go hard. I'm a big believer they should make more golf games and less shooters. Oh, you piece of crap, dude. What percentage of AAA releases have you shoot a gun? Because like there, there's definitely some that have you swing a sword instead. But I think that like the ratio of swords to guns is crazy. Like I think we're maybe it was at a different. It was a peak in like 2013 or something like that. But we're getting way less swords and way more guns these days. For Honor was pretty good. Yeah, it was like seven years ago, though, or something. For Honor, yikes. For Honor dies of cringe. So you don't actually... Maybe you guys don't like games. Because every game that I play, with a couple of exceptions, but most games that I play, I play them for an hour, and I say, I had fun with that. That was pretty good. Every time I bring up a game to chat, For Honor. I played 100 hours of it. I hated every second. Oh, why do you hate games, by the way? Oh. No, I just hate AAA. Uh, do I have Drake in this chat? Not the person, but the, and not the dragon either, but the oh, emote. There's a couple AAA chance. developers. Oh, a good line. I give a pass to. From software, until they make a bad one, that's a, that's a pack one, pick one, no matter what. I, don't, I, don't, I can't stand to see Bubba Watson get another chip in. Yeah, the secret to playing good games is literally... You always have to be careful being complimentary. You never know who's watching. The secret to playing good games is not like wait for games to get good reviews from the games media. You simply wait to see um, what games Retromation or Splattercat play that their audience actually likes. And then you yoink it and play it yourself a lot. <laughs> and then you give credit where credit is due. You don't go, hey, I found this game when I was just browsing through Steam. You say, hey, I have a large viewer overlap with these people and they gave me the back channel tip that, that this game is good. My frames! <laughs> There's some Pog games in the new releases on Steam today. Donnie, Donnie Darko meme. Are they Pog games or are they 6 out of 10 Vampire Survivors clones again? I love that Donald Darko meme. Yeah, forget uh, Barbieheimer. Hey, condom for a normal guy. 
Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Forget Barbieheimer. The newest media event of the season is Donald Darko, where you watch Donnie Darko and then play Kingdom Hearts back to back with Donald Duck as the most powerful wizard in all of Heartlandia. Saw Patrol? I don't think people are actually going to pay money to see the Paw Patrol movie in theaters, but I kind of hope it happens because I want to see a bunch of like 22-year-olds complain about two-year-olds ruining their screening of Paw Patrol. <laughs> Does anybody else think that decorum in theaters has really fallen a lot these days? I went to see the Paw Patrol movie in theaters and there were a bunch of parents with their kids in there and their kids were going crazy, man. I went to see this sacred religious film, A Quiet Place in Theaters, and people had the audacity to be eating popcorn that was sold in the concession stand of the movie theater during a movie where audio is of the utmost importance. Does anybody else think you should be able to murder anybody else in a movie theater for an, imper for an imperceptible social slight that only I notice? I'm also here to tell you, I mean, like, I don't think, again, I don't think people are going to go see Saw 10 at the movie theater, for one. Not many people, at least. It'll probably be the biggest movie on its opening weekend, but maybe that's it. But nobody that's an adult without kids is going to see the Paw Patrol movie. But also, take it from me, you got to stop chasing the, the Barbie Heimer high, okay? Two original films with names that kind of fit together, both being critical and commercial darlings coming out on exactly the same day. Like, that's something that you, you can't create that with artifice. You have to wait for that to happen naturally. It may never happen again in your lifetime. Don't try to force it with Saw and, and Paw Patrol, mostly because I don't want Paw Patrol to get sold out. That might be the first movie I take my kid to see. You're not waiting till Toy Story 5? No, because there's like actual artists involved in the creation of that movie and they're on strike right now. So that one might be delayed a little bit. Paw Patrol, on the other hand, I'm pretty sure the movie's written by like Chat GPT 3, so <laughs> it should be okay. Guy who on dates keeps trying to impress his date by telling him that he stopped watching movies until the SAG after a strike is over. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we're getting too, too real for Twitch. <laughs> So do you like any movies? Yeah, I love movies. Unfortunately, I had to stop watching them recently because of the sag after a strike. Just to sh I don't want to be a scab, you know? Careful, he's a hero. The Arrow actor said that striking was stupid. That's probably because Arrow films in Vancouver, and when he's not filming, he has to live in Ohio. So honestly, I'm not saying you can't blame him. You can still blame him, but I can understand where he's coming from. Arrow probably makes about the same amount of money whether there's a strike or not. I know I've done this bit before, but like, it's not a bit, it's my life. Really pisses me off when I'm taking my baby out for a nap in her stroller, and then I have to like deviate from my usual route because they're filming something that nobody's ever going to watch. No disrespect, okay? Hey, well, they're filming something here. What is it? Is it Deadpool 3? Are they filming Deadpool 3 here? I'll take a 10-minute detour for Deadpool 3. Nah, brother. It's family law. They're filming an outdoor scene in family law where Taya Leone drinks a cup of coffee while looking out to the mountains. I, have, I don't have the cojones to do this, by the way. But I, so many times in Vancouver, you'll walk by like a, a film set that has the crafts craft services table. I always thought, like, if I just walked up and said, give me that bag of baked lays, they wouldn't know, right? They would just give me the bag of baked lays. This is, they're not even showing us a shot anymore. They're just showing us his face. What's your opinion on kettle cooked chips? Here's the thing. Anyone else? I would assume that they meant kettle cooked chips. But origin is very specific in their verbiage. So I've never, I've never heard of a kettle cooked ship, personally. Shipley, <laughs> dude. I think we can make it over the the gap here. No, I messed up. It's a typo. Okay, apology accepted. I do like kettle cooked chips. 
for example, in Canada and also parts of the United States and also Norway, they have Miss Vicky's. Goaded chip. However, as I've, I know I've said it before, librarian, I don't know if you're here, here's one for the, um, the Kettle Cook Chips compilation. Mmm. I gotta say, Miss Vicky's Jalapeno, if we did a tier list of potato chips, I mean, it's, it's in the S tier, there's no doubt about that. She said one sec, but I'm already off the clock. Now this is mukbang. I think that Miss Vicky's is very good. I think that the kettle cooked, the brand called Kettle, I think they're overrated. I, when they started popping off here in like the early 2010s, I would get them now and then. And I would always be like, when I was eating them, I would get attracted by the artisan flavors. Pepperoncini, uh, honey Dijon, stuff like that. They're, oh, there's not just salt and vinegar, it's sea salt. That salt came from the ocean. And then after like, you know, a normal adult man serving, AKA 80% of an entire family size bag, I would be like, I think these are a little too greasy. But Miss Vicky's, they got like, I don't know if it's a little less oily or something, but they just, they hold up better for like, uh, you know, eating your feelings away. I like the crunch of a kettle cooked, but I also like the crisp of a normal potato chip. If I'm buying potato chips from the grocery store, it's basically 50-50 whether I'm, I'm going crispy or crunchy, but I like them both. I feel like Miss Vicky's are, if, if you were to poll Canadians on beloved brands, Miss Vicky's would end up in the upper quintile. I think they would, they're in the top 25% most beloved brands within Canada. They might even be a lot higher, I don't know. But like, what did you, because original, it's, it's not a chip where you buy originals. You get the, the original flavor of Miss Vicky's is sea salt and malt vinegar, turquoise bag. The number two flavor, jalapeno, light green bag. I tried jalapeno, was not a fan. Okay, you're insane. You should go to the mental hospital. <laughs> Sorry. You were, you're wrong, and I'm threatened by the difference between your opinion and mine. You're crazy. You've lost it. We love our Miss Vicky. Miss Vicky's, Miss Chipley's, Chibley, and Miss Vicky, the chip, the matriarch of the chip family. I think Miss Vicky's is, is well respected within Canada. Women's golf in Canada. She carries the mantle for Canadian golf in general. Excuse me. She's such an amazing. Are they talking about me? Young lady to be around. Her personality is is. Billy me or Billy him? She's just a good. Your name's Billy too. No, that's why I'm so freaking confused. Two-time major winner. But what I'm impressed about most with her game, Luke, is the fact that you know she is such a long hitter in the game. You don't quite see too many women in the game right now that Careful. don't talk about hitting it long like we do in the men's game. But make no bones about it, she hits it a long way out. The long way. Over some of the other players, and that's why she is such a prolific winner on the LPGA. Can I say something about Toy Story that might be controversial? A lot of people my age would say the worst thing about Toy Story 4 is the fact that it exists. Once you have kids, your opinion will change. Worst, worst part about Toy Story 4 is when Keanu Reeves says, Yes, I, Canada. That part always makes me cringe. Can you do the jump? Yes, I, Canada! Because it's, it's pandering to the Canadian audience. It's already pandering by hiring Keanu Reeves in the first place. It's my greatest shot of all time. Please don't squander it. I have not seen three or four. Well, listen, my personal opinion, if you think at some point in your life you will have kids, oh, this one's gonna get me in trouble. Whatever you like to watch is fine. <laughs> Period. Next sentence. If you have, if you are, 
if you think one day you will have kids, if that's something you desire for your life, Knowing that you have a limited amount of free time, I don't think you should endeavor to watch children's movies as a childless adult unless you're interested in them. If you watch a trailer for a new movie that's for kids and you say, that looks fun, go see it. But if you're like, I have to keep up with all the Pixar movies that have released even though I don't necessarily feel like I want to, don't worry. If anyone's going to say you have to see Toy Story 3, listen, if you're 28, you haven't seen Toy Story 3 yet, and you expect one day you're going to have kids, don't watch Toy Story 3, because odds are you're probably going to watch it 25 times when your kid is between the age of like 0 and 12, okay? Watch some Yodorowsky movies or something like that. Watch Holy Mountain. Watch... Uh, Nymphomania or something like that, a Serbian film. Watch some stuff that you cannot watch when your child is in the room or something like that. American Pie, American Pie 2, so true. All the sex comedies, Euro Trip, Human Centipede. Do not watch a Serbian film. Why? Sorry, I like world cinema. I'll watch a movie from anywhere. Wow, what a save. Needed it. Needed that in a big way. Chipping in. People will really be like, I'll watch a movie from anywhere. I'm not afraid of subtitles. And then their top 10 favorite films on Letterboxd are Parasite in the number three position, three Spider-Man movies. Sorry, I'm gonna... I like this finishing goal because it gives you options. You don't have to necessarily hit driver here. If you do, you gotta take it over some... Three Spider-Man movies. A, a Fellini film that they didn't even like that much. They they just put it on out of necessity while also like browsing social media on their phone. And then at the end of it, they said, "Wow, I have exotic taste." Really, is it exotic taste or is it just Wong Kar Wong Kar Wai's in the mood for love again? It's Wong Kar Wai's Wong Kar Wai's in the mood for love again. You know, I was because I'm a millennial and cringe. I was reading Reddit, and there was like people always talk about movies that have not aged well. What's a movie that's actually aged like the worst? Everyone brings up Revenge of the Nerds, which is crazy. At the end of the movie, one of the nerds puts on a Darth Vader costume and tricks another a jock's girlfriend into sleeping with him, and then they like sell nude pictures of uh, a lady against her will on the bottom of pie plates at like the fundraiser but it's like a great story for the nerds because they got one over the jocks like it's, it's that's insanity but then someone also brought up how in american pie one nadia gets filmed while changing on a webcam and then the video gets distributed and she gets in trouble like she gets reprimanded by her host family because her she didn't even do anything, man. All she did was change. She just changed her damn clothes. Good they were gonna deport her. She touched herself? All right, well, in that case, she probably deserved to be punished, but. <laughs> I'm joking! Jason! Oh, so she can't, Shannon Elizabeth can't touch herself, but Jason Biggs can fuck a dessert? Did Bubba make it or did Bubba get eliminated? Now that he's not dragging me down, we could go crazy. Goat yay if he was Bill Clinton. But she didn't have to suck me off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Justin, is that you? That's a pretty good one. Spit it on the blue dress and forget my number. I don't know. I'm not familiar with all the... I'm Luke Elby, here alongside... All the semantics of the Monica Lewinsky stuff. I was like nine when it happened or something. A couple strokes back. I think I'm like nine strokes back. This would be crazy, though. Imagine. Imagine all the chipping, chipping for today. Oh, woo hoo 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 <laughs> Weird Al should make hornier songs. It would be sick if Weird Al came out with like a like a horny album, like Janelle Monae. 
Horny Al. <laughs> I think that's an old bit, right? Thoughts on Tom Hanks in general? What a shot, though. Well, I didn't want to say it, because I got nothing wrong with Tom Hanks as, like a, as a human being. Or as an actor. I think he's a great actor. But I do feel like Tom Hanks, at least over the course of my lifespan, is like one of the most well-respected actors with one of the most mid-filmographies. Sure. Okay. Philadelphia, great movie. Forrest Gump, not my tempo, but like I get it. Saving Private Ryan, amazing film. All-time film. But like, apart from that, he's also like, you'd be surprised if, if you check Tom Hanks' filmography, you'd be like, this guy is in like nine movies a year and one of them is worth watching. I'm just saying it. I'm, I'm, I, you could disagree if you want. What was his Dungeons and Dragons Panic film called? That one's called Mazes and Monsters, but that, I'm not gonna cut, like I'm not gonna make him feel bad about that one. I think he was like 22 when it was made and I don't think he wrote the script, but it is a movie where a team, a, a group of teens get really into the uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but it's called Mazes and Monsters, and then it causes Tom Hanks to experience psychosis, and then he kills somebody. What kind of rhythm is that? It must be tough falling out of. What am I doing here, JJ? Like Why can't I remember? I think I killed. I have a knife. I think I killed somebody. I know I killed somebody. You need to put some respect on Big and Splash. This shit was like 50 years ago, man. Also, just in general, listen, I'm not going for either of those movies. I'm not coming for their throat or anything like that. But I don't... <laughs> okay, I, I'm sorry to Tom Hanks. Castaway. He carries the movie. It's just him in a volleyball the whole time. Helen hunts in the movie for like 16 seconds, okay? And she tells him, sorry you spent all that time in the island, but I'm married now. Rips his damn heart out, Okay. Saving Private Ryan, ensemble cast, but he still does an amazing job portraying, you know, a man who's forced to do his duty even though there's no humanity left in it anymore, okay? It's a metaphor for America in the 1940s. Hey, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Maybe this is needlessly reductive of me. Maybe this is a boomer take. I respect an actor in those films you got to put together like a pretty amazing performance to get me to, to give you your flowers in a movie where you're like a little kid who gets put in a man's body and plays a piano with his feet or like a movie where you fuck a mermaid or something like that. Like, like Philadelphia, sure. It's a towering performance in an important movie. But like Splash, the movie where he falls in love with a mermaid... Come on, let's get serious here. This is an unserious conversation. <laughs> Dude, I, okay, yes, I know that T-Pain in the Lonely Island song says he fricked a mermaid. I was laughing, I was in T-Pain's chat, just, you know, hanging out, trying to give him some advice on how to break into the music industry. And I, I, I loved this so much, I posted it in the content creator Discord. This is what his nightbot said. This is literally like two days ago. Hey, you ever come into the stream and just don't really like what's going on at the current moment? Well, you're in luck. Twitch just added a super useful feature called Just Fucking Leave that allows you to go about your day instead of complaining about what you don't like. It's amazing. Try it out someday. I was like, it's so good, man. It's even better if you imagine T-Pain say saying it, and it's two times better than that if you imagine him being auto-tuned when he says it. You see the tweet that had like those, all those shots from um, Christopher Nolan movies where the character has their back to the camera and then there's like a scene in front of them and then someone said, are there any back shots in Oppenheimer? I can't believe I'm relying on Twitch chat to teach me something here, but like, I thought that back shots is when you ejaculate or someone ejaculates on the person's back. The context on Twitter appears to just be when you're hitting it from the back instead. That's, that's antiquated verbiage, NL, okay. We've been over it, that's called supermanning. No, supermanning, 
is when you ejaculate or someone ejaculates on the back and then slaps the bed sheet to it so that when the person like gets up they have a cape on like it look like looks like they have a cape like superman I'm in first place. How did this happen? I just opened the stream. What the, What do you want me to be like, oh, what'd you have for lunch today? By the way, can somebody tell me what back shots are? Like, I did, there's no good way to segue into this. Like, <laughs> just, just being honest. Your jokes per minute rate is impressive. Thank you. I have, um... I think like deep-seated feelings of inadequacy. So I feel like if I'm not actively trying to provide entertainment like at least once per minute, then like the like the darkness creeps in. Gets that one to go down and that'll end the day's work. Minus seven today. Holy cow. Are you seeing this? Ty Broken Cameron Tringale wins. Who the hell's Cameron Tringale? I thought I won. Cameron Triangle? This player was a little <laughs> cocky when they took on this rival, but not only did they take What them, happened, they man? Down. This was an old fashioned smackdown. I guess because I was so bad, I golfed earlier in the day, so then the good golfers got to go after me and they just caught up to me and beat me. Well, that's all we've got time for. Playoffs? I, dude, one of the worst kill screens in a video game ever. This is the putt to win the tournament. Makes the putt, you won the tournament. A text box pops up. Playoffs ended. Cameron Triangle has won the tournament. <laughs> what the hell? An opportunity to make a Nice back shot. Stop talking. Because here's the thing. You guys don't get to talk about back shots. If I don't get to talk about back shots. No one ever told me what they were. Is it when you hit it from the back to the melody of Roll It Slow, but then you got to get up in it fast, but I'm a finish last? No matter how much of a thug you see, I still spit it like it's R&B. Come to the club with me, and when some Luther come on, I hope you're feeling me and still gonna be in love with me. It did feel fast, I'll be honest. Well, I mean, it was twist of course it was fast. What's the one where you replace, you're hitting it from the back, and then you replace yourself with a buddy, and then you go wave at her from the window so she gets freaked out? Well, that's called, like, that's definitely a crime. I believe that if you're 80, that's called the Houdini. If you're like my age, it's called the David Blaine. Look, I don't think anyone here was in danger of doing that, but definitely don't do that. Or like ask first, but that's going to be an uncomfortable conversation. <laughs> What's your kink? Uh, I, I've always been into the idea of Houdiniing. Really, What's that? Cut to three minutes later, you got a box of your stuff, you're standing on the front step. I wouldn't say they're guarding. Hey, did you see that uh, Bleacher Report re released its list of the top 10 best defensive players in the NBA of all time? And there's not a single guard in there? Here's a question. First off, what about Prime Kobe? Secondly, why is the position called guard if it's not defensive? That doesn't make any sense to me. I'll be honest with you. I don't really know anything about um, basketball positions. Like the only position I really understand is center. So you're tall and you tend to play close to the hoop so you can get rebounds and also, you know, just pot in a, a cheap one. And then there's point guard, shooting guard, small forward, and someone else. <laughs> Like, I, even when I was a kid, I had no idea what the hell a small forward and a shooting guard, what the difference was. I'm pretty sure a small forward in NBA Jam is better at stealing the ball. Small forward is taller than shooting guard? So you telling me that the... That the I was going to say the class. <laughs> You're telling me that the, the only class with small in its name is traditionally speaking the second smallest position. The third smallest position. What? It was point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. That's crazy. I played like recreational basketball. I didn't play like, listen, 
I wasn't very tall, and I wasn't good enough to not be that tall. So I didn't, I didn't play like scholastic basketball. But none of our coaches ever told us about positions. All we knew is the tallest kid is the kid who does the, the tip. And then basically apart from that, if you receive the ball, please pass it to the kid who wears a Chicago Bulls jersey to class every single day. And that's all I know about basketball to this day. But it's hard for me because everybody on the court is wearing jerseys. Sometimes they're all wearing Chicago Bulls jerseys too. <laughs> if the Bulls are playing. But you could beat any fifth grader? One-on-one, -on -one, absolutely, yeah. One-on-one, -on -one, I could beat any, any American fifth grader. I won't speak for like Lithuania or Greece or whatever. There you go. We made it through the front nine day one. Just keep it going. Work on that short game. We, we drive for dough, we putt for show. That's what, that's what granddad always said. Your dick is a quarter of your granddad's dick. Well, in some ways, 25% of the genes in my penis came from my grandfather specifically, I think is what you're getting at. But like, that doesn't mean my dick is 25% of his dick. Otherwise, you'd end up with like a patchwork Dick, it would look like a Klimt painting or something. It depends, like the genes are there in, in quarters from each of my grandparents, but like at the same time, like due to the way that gene expression works, I might be expressing 0% of my grandpa's dick, or I might be expressed, I might have exactly the same dick. It just depends how the, depends how the mitosis shook out, you know? How much of it is your grandma's? 25% paternal grandmother, 25% maternal, Grandmother. What if your parents are siblings? I have to think that one through. <laughs> A bit short with that effort. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to get out the Punnett square on that one. You ever think I'm too old for this shit? Like anytime I play a AAA video game, yes. But apart from that. Did you know that when Danny Glover said the line, I'm too old for this shit in Lethal Weapon 1, and he was contemplating retirement, the motherfucker was like 43 years old. Yeah, but he was an officer of the law. No, I know, but like, I mean, I'm just saying, he was like talking about retirement and like going on like a sailing trip and shit like that. Like he was, he was, he was ready to retire. Abusing your power is timeless. Excuse me, Riggs and Murtaugh were, they were good police officers. They saved that lady. They have some hijinks with Joe Pesci. If they were bad guys, they wouldn't have made four movies about them, okay? Olivia Munn, Mel Gibson, Olivia Munn, Chibli. Danny Glover. Chibli, Olivia Munn, Joe Pesci, everybody, Joe Pesci. Musical guest, Goo Goo Dolls. We love, the, we love John Rezesnik, don't we, folks? The Goo Goo Dolls. Okay, I've lost, I've lost it. How does this bit keep making it through the door? People keep laughing. And then when they say, stop it, it's not funny. That's how you know it's fucking hilarious, dude. What's your favorite sitcom? Mm, I'd have to say, I like cerebral comedy. It's a show called The Big Bang Theory. It's about physicists and the hijinks that they get into. Um, Sheldon is asked if he wants to date someone who is an associate professor of physics at his university. And then Penny says, Sheldon, she's a scientist like you. And he said, please, the only way that woman could have a contribution to the scientific community is if they start sending chimps back into space. <laughs> oh, man. You got her good. I, got, I haven't actually seen like a whole episode of the show, but the YouTube algorithm recommended me a video 10 times Sheldon Cooper owns women with thoughts and words <laughs> and he, honestly i think he's he's finally saying what everyone's thinking i've heard it's a pretty good show with facts and logic that's right not thoughts and words i watched a lot of big bang theory when i was in college and now i'm ashamed honestly if you want to lay it back 
I don't think you can be judged for bad taste until you're 21. Once you're 21, you could start to be judged for bad taste, I think. But pre-21, 25, 23, whatever, yeah, go for it. 21-year-olds have horrible taste? No, they're all on Letterboxd. Now drive the Incubus song. I don't want to go off on a rant here. Does anybody else think that Incubus is Goo Goo Dolls for people whose taste is not the worst taste in the world, but is like the third worst in the world? No, we must be getting close to the end of the stream because I'm just making enemies now. There's no need for that. Not the worst, man. How about Interpol? Now we're talking. You would like Interpol? Oh, no, I see the emphasis. You would like Interpol. I love it when a singer sounds like me at the drive-thru. I will have a 10-piece Coke Zero to drink. Will that be all, sir? Yeah, that's it, I think. Something like that. Did I make, did I make the cut today with an even? That's not Crash. Crash Test Dummies is like, Once there was a guy who Ordered 10 chicken McNuggets at the drive through window. And then Interpol's like, you know, it's like a, a three minute, 11 long, 11 second long song that ripped through all the underground Brooklyn indie rock venues about how they put barbecue sauce in the bag even though you ordered sweet and sour. Can I hit you with a, a controversial take? This take's not going to be popular, and that's why I'm excited to say it. I think that the worst kind of bowling is cosmic bowling. I, I like bowling. I don't get to do it very much because it must be a bad business because, like, bowling alleys just keep disappearing and they never open any new ones. But, like, I like going to a bowling alley and just bowling and having fun. But when you go to a bowling alley and it's like they got the black lights up and the... Planets are zipping by and the shooting stars and they're playing like Pat Benatar's hit me with your best shot and stuff like that. That's that's not so much for me. They got the bumpers up. People are like, hey, uh, sir, can you play a little faster? My kid's going to go. And I'm like, I'm trying to I'm try. This is a league game. I'm in an asynchronous league game. Hey, Mad Dog Nation, by the way, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Must be a bowling alley owner who hates cosmic bowling. You can't be a bowling alley owner. No, I'm not trying to be rude. This is no disrespect. No bowling alley owner is gifting 100 subscriptions. They got to... The margins are too low. It's one of those businesses that offends me. I know this is like a streamer talking, so like I don't know what I'm talking about. But it's one of those things that offends me because it's expensive, but also the business doesn't do well. It's like whenever a, like you see a movie theater owner be like, our theater is going to have to close. I'm like, really? It's not a good business getting people to pay $20 to sit in a chair that you bought 30 years ago for two hours to see a movie that somebody else made and gave to you? I, I get that you got to pay the... You, you, I, I'm sure you pay a rate to the studio based on your ticket sales or something like that, but at the same time... Don't, don't put that on the consumer, man. Don't try to guilt me into paying $23 for popcorn just so the, you can keep giving 90% of your revenue to Warner Brothers. Do you realize the overhead of a movie theater? It, it, listen, I don't know how much money it takes to run a movie theater, but I do have a living room, so... I have like a, a general concept of some of what's involved. Not really what they were hoping for there. They're not profitable. Well, to be fair, like neither is my living room. You know what's funny? Chad did not like the movie theater take. That's fine. I accept that I can be wrong sometimes. But I could say exactly the same thing about restaurants and chat would plus to it. I should have gone for restaurants instead. People be like, it's a really hard time for restaurants right now. It's just, it's really hard to stay in business getting people to pay $19 for a chicken sandwich with $3 worth of ingredients. 
I'm, I see. I didn't feel good about saying that, but so many people are saying plus two right now that I think. Th I bet this is how every streamer starts out being like, "I'm just gonna play League of Legends," and then they become politics streamers. Because when you say things that people agree with, it feels so good. Like you feel like you're doing something right. Yeah, that's. And when you play League of Legends, you know you're doing something see, wrong. So like, it's a natural pivot. If you haven't eaten at a restaurant in 15 years, what have you missed? I'm not saying this sarcastically. I'm saying like there have been changes in food trends. What, it, what would blow your mind at a restaurant if you haven't eaten in a restaurant? Let's say you went to prison for 10 years, a loss in quality all around. I'd have to disagree with you on that one, brother. The cost, sure, the cost is higher now. No doubt about that. Poke bowl, Brussels, it's so true, I'm picturing like an advertisement. Brussels sprouts are back. Me picking up my friend from prison, he was there. The crime isn't relevant. <laughs> Me picking my friend up from prison, he's been there for 10 years for uh, embezzlement. You won't believe this, brother. Brussels sprouts are back. Hey, hey man, what changed while I was on the inside? Uh, Donald Trump became the president. The Minnesota Vikings still have not won a Super Bowl. And Brussels sprouts are back. Me driving him to the mental hospital because he, he tried to kill himself after I told him how the world has changed in the last uh, 10 years. The best players in the National Basketball Association are Greek and Serbian. LeBron? Come on. Come on, nephew. LeBron's still, uh, he's great, he's probably a top 20 player, but he's no longer like a consensus top five player, man, come on. Egg knows ball. He is, he was on a broken ankle in the playoffs. Yeah, well, you know the difference? Luka Doncic's ankles don't break, so he's better. Conditioning and bone density is part of being the greatest of all time, okay? Doncic is so badly conditioned. Did I say Don Cheech? I meant Jokic. <laughs> I meant John Wall. Olivia Munn, John Wall, Bradley Beal, Rui Hachimura is here, everybody. Rui Hachimura made it to the Western Conference semifinals this year with the Los Angeles Lakers, the favored team of one Chibli. Why do you know so much about the Washington Wizards? They're the NBA team that's closest to me by geographic position. John Wall tore his ACL just walking around in his damn house. Yeah, and Joe Sackick uh, suffered a career-ending injury getting three of his fingers eaten by a snowblower, but that doesn't mean he's not, you know, one of the greatest centers of all time. What are you talking about? It's true! That's Joe Sackick, Colorado Avalanche gamer. <laughs> hockey player he was already injured while he was injured it snowed he used a snowblower to try to um clear the snow to be a good neighbor the snowblower jammed he put his fingers into the snowblower and like ripped three of them off and then retired Sackick was not carried by forsberg listen they, they both carried the avalanche along with rod blake and Sand is Ozilinch, but come on, dude. Oh yeah, this is tracking nicely. Sackick was Sackick and Forsberg was Forsberg. When Forsberg left the Avalanche, the Avalanche both had success. The Avalanche still had success. And when Forsberg left the Avalanche, Forsberg still had success. That's the kind of strike. That's the mark of two greats. We don't have to tear them apart, okay? What about Patrick Waugh? Patrick Waugh was Patrick washed by then. He got he got lucky. Who are we talking about? I was going to say, what's... Listen, like, it's not nice to laugh at somebody for being hurt. But what do you think is the funniest sports injury of all time? Like, somebody spraining their ankle while playing basketball is not funny. That's just sports. Joe Sackick having to end his career because... His fingers got chopped off by his own snowblower. I, would, I don't know if I'd say it's funny, but it's at least remarkable. It's unusual. 
Wasn't there like an NHL player who injured himself playing like Dance Central or something like that? That's an absolute Sammy, what is the Sammy Sallow one again? I, I forgot about the Sammy Sallow one. He was like picking up his kid's Legos or something and, and broke his back. <laughs> or, um, yes, that, that's exactly what I was looking for. Gus Frerot in the NFL celebrating a touchdown by bashing his head into the, um, the field goal post and giving himself a concussion. Plaxico Burris shooting himself in the leg at a club. I thought he was cleaning his gun at home. No, that was that was John Morant, and it wasn't a gun. It was actually is a weird coincidence. He was in a car with his friends playing with a gun-shaped lighter that he bought. He was pretending, he was pantomiming as if it was a gun, but it wasn't a gun. Is the thing? London or Fortnite tomorrow? I don't know. I think we might play Code Names tomorrow. I don't have any confirmation of that yet, but Chibli opened negotiations by suggesting a, an old-school RuneScape hardcore group play, and I said, how about code names? That's where we're at in our, in our present negotiation. And as you know, I wrote a little book called The Art of the Deal. So if Chibli thinks he can outdeal me, he's going to have to deal with me and Olivia Munn. And Ripley, believe it or not, I wrote it. I wrote the book. You read it, or maybe you didn't. I don't know any of our remaining rivals, quite frankly. When am I going to get to go up against Calvin Triangle? Anyway, enjoy the rest of your evening. I'll see it. It's so true, Tony Finale, man. His hat's too big for his damn head. What's going on with his hat, man? One size fits all? Nah, 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 nah. Not so fast, buddy. Anyway, see you tomorrow. It sounds like the vitamin C song. As we go on, we remember. All the times we had together As our lives change from my